Hello and good evening, friends. This is the last session of the special edition of the ACNS webinars that we are conducting this month on the occasion of the birth month of our president, Prof. Yoko Kato. I hope you all might have started receiving the access codes for Medwin Neurosurgery, and many of you might have started enjoying the vast benefit the extraordinary site offers for the field of neurosurgery. So, in this last edition of special session of ACNS webinars, we have two great talks lined up for you. The first speaker for today is a stalwart in surgery for CP angle tumors. Having completed more than 2,000 cases of surgery for tumors in this region, today is regarded as a final authority in this regard. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor for me to introduce you to the Professor and Chairman of the Department of Neurosurgery, Tokyo Medical University, Japan, Professor Michiro Kono. Professor Kono was a former director of neurosurgery at Tokyo Metropolitan Police Hospital. He reserves his specialty in the field of acoustic neuromas, benign skull based tumors, cerebrovascular neurosurgery, and <laughs> surgery. He is a noted author and has published several manuscripts in internationally reputed journals. He is a mentor to several young neurosurgeons in his country, and we are so thankful to him to have accepted this invitation to be a speaker in our webinars. Professor Kono is going to talk about skull based approach for CP angle tumors. The second speaker for today is Dr. Bing Shen, who is the attending neurosurgeon department of neurosurgery, Huashan Hospital, Fudan University, Shanghai, China. Professor Shen reserves his specialities in the field of pituitary surgery, endoscopic skull based surgery, and today is going to talk about the role of extended endonasal endoscopy transtuberculum transplanum corridor in the management of pituitary adenomas. We are so thankful to Professor Shen to have accepted our invitation to be speaker today. The chair for today's webinar is Professor Wali Dabas. Professor Abbas is a professor of neurosurgery at Cairo Medical University and he is an expert in the field of skull base and cerebrovascular surgery. We are so thankful to him to have accepted our invitation to chair this session of today's webinar. On behalf of the Education Committee of the ACNS and the President Professor Yoko Kato, I would like to welcome today's speakers, Professor Michiro Kono and Professor Ming Shen, as well as the Chair Professor Wali Abbas, to this online platform of ACNS webinars. Dr. Liu Bun Seng from Malaysia is my co-host for today. And with that introduction, may I please hand over the podium to Professor Abbas. Uh, hi, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here in the ACNS uh, educational program. Uh, I'm so happy uh, for the invitation by Professor Kato. I'm Professor Raja. And I'm so happy we have two great speakers today. Uh, Professor uh, Konhu and Professor Ming Shen. And please, Professor Kohn, we would like to hear your presentation. Please share your screen, and we are okay. sure it's going to be a great presentation. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Professor Kono from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, thank you for your invitation from the ACNS. And uh, it's my great honor to be here. And uh, it's my great pleasure to talk about the score based approaches for CPN tumors. About COI, there is nothing to declare. Uh, before starting my presentation, I'd like to introduce myself and our institute shortly. I'm a chairman of uh, Department of Neurosurgery, uh, Tokyo Medical University, uh, Tokyo, Japan. I'm a skull-based surgeon. I'm a once active member and one double FNS educational course faculty member. I used to be a disciple of Professor Keiji Sano and Professor Tomio Sasaki. At our score base center of Tokyo Medical University Hospital, we perform surgery for CP and tumors, two or four cases per week, totaling about 150 cases per year. My personal experience of, of surgery for CP and tumor is more than 2,000, including 1,400 vestibular schwannomas. And this is my personal experience of surgery for CP and tumors. Uh, vestibular schwannomas uh, accounts for three fourth, and other schwannomas, 10%, and meningiomas. 11% and others like this. As you know, there are various surgical approaches for CP young tumors. I have been selecting these approaches for more than 25 years. 
For best version of us, I selected lateral sigmoid approach in most cases in contrast with the other CPN tumors, selecting lateral sigmoid, transmastoid, middle cranial fossa, and trans or paracondyl approaches like this. Transmastoid approach was used in more than 200 cases for many geomers, epidermal cysts, facial nerve schwannomas, and jugular hormone schwannomas. Middle cranial force approach was used in uh, 200 cases for many geomers, epidermal cysts, facial nerve schwannomas, and trigeminal schwannomas. Combined transpetals approach was used in 100 cases for these diseases. I talk about the mastoidectomy and the middle cranial force approaches and surgery for CP angle tumors using skull base approaches and application of skull base approaches for vascular regions. Firstly, mastoidectomy and middle cranial force approaches. Transmastoid approach uh, has two concepts of lateral labyrinthine approach, preserving the semicircular canals to preserve hearing, and translabyrinthine approach uh, break the semicircular canals, uh, sacrificing hearing. About the mastoidectomy, our method is very safe and simple and fast. In our method, uh, we make outer bar holes outside the, the operative field behind the sigmoid sinus. These outer bar holes make us possible to dissect between the sigmoid sinus and the covering bone first. And after that, we can remove the uh, covering bone uh, using many kinds of longules. This method is quite safe and speedy for exposing the sigmoid sinus. Left side, these are the outer, outer bar holes. After removing the mastoid surface, we can see the lateral semicircular canal and I'm thinning the covering bone of the sigmoid sinus. I connected two outer bar holes and I'm doing a dissection between the sigmoid sinus and the covering bone. So we can see the semicircular canals and expose the sigmoid sinus. In this case, uh, we did the combined transpetals approach and I'm cutting the middle meninger artery and we can see the GSPN here. And uh, I'm doing the anterior transpetalosectomy. This is the com uh, typical combined transpetals approach. When we cut the tentorium, uh, we should uh, care about the preservation of venous drainage. When we cut the uh, tentorium, we cut here uh, ventrally to the entry point of the petrosal vein to preserve uh, venous drainage, in particular meningioma case. So this method was uh, reported uh, by uh, Osaka City University group. In this case, with the left uh, CP angle epidermal cyst case, I did the combined transpetals approach, and this is the mastoid emissary vein. And we can see the GSPN. I'm, I'm doing the anterior transpetalosectomy. So we should remove this area to enlarge the surgical field. This is the endolymphatic sac. 
So after that, I'm cutting the posterior fossa dura, preserving endolipatic sac. And I'm searching for the petrosal vein, and I found it. So I ligated the SPS ventrally to the entry point of the uh, petrosal vein, and uh, I cut the tentorium uh, completely. Seventh and eighth square nerves here, six nerve, and I'm removing the cyst wall, fourth nerve, third nerve, and I'm opening the Meckel's cave, and tumor was totally removed. Hearing was preserved, and postoperative course was uneventful. Middle cranial fossa approach uh, has also two concepts of anterior transpetals approach and middle fossa approach. Anterior transpetals approach is used for uh, trigeminal schwannomas, tentorial meningiomas, and prepontine lesions. When I used the anterior transpetals approach, I set the patient's head without rotation. But middle fossa approach is used for facial nerve schwannomas and very small uh, vestibular schwannomas. When I use it, uh, I set the 20 or 30 degrees <coughs> rotation and to, to the upper side like this. Uh, this is the uh, surgical anatomy, and the craniotomy is uh, like this, uh, not large, uh, under the uh, squamosal suture, like this. This right side, this is the area of drilling in anterior transpetals approach. And this is the area of drilling in middle force approach. We can see the Bill's bar here between the facial and uh, superior vestibular nerves. Middle force dura is cut uh, horizontally like this, and posterior force dura uh, is cut perpendicularly. And after ligation of this SPS, I cut the tentorium like this. And this is the uh, illustration of the typical anterior transpetals approach. Seventh and eighth square nerves are here. Uh, fifth nerve, sixth nerve, fourth nerve, like this. <clears throat> I show you the video of this uh, anterior transpetals approach uh, in the trigeminal schwannoma case. Left side, we can see GSPN. I'm drawing in the Kawasis uh, triangle. Now I'm uh, exposing the outer wall of the Meckel's cave using a uh, interdural dissection. After that, I'm cutting into the outer uh, wall of the Meckel's cave. So tumor was uh, removed uh, piece by piece. <clears throat> Uh, totally removed, and this is the uh, normal uh, fiber of the trigeminal nerve, and uh, we can see the abducens nerve here. Tumors totally removed. <clears throat> In this case, with the vestibular schwannoma, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we routinely use the retrosigmoid approach, but uh, I found 
で、動作を、displacement of fund, fashion of, uh, so surprisingly, so, uh, I took the tumor la- like this, and、uh, for the remnant, I reoperated、uh, via the middle force approach. In this case, I, <coughs> I showed the、uh, procedures of the middle force approach. This is the middle meningeal artery. And I'm、uh, dissecting the、uh, GSPN from posterior to anterior, like this. For breathing around the GSPN, I put an、uh, fibrin glue A liquid soaked surgical cotton balls using a pasting technique, like this. And after that,、uh, this is the arcade eminence. And、uh, so I started drilling around here、uh, using Sana's technique. After identification of the、uh, IAC Dura, I drew、uh, like this direction, like this. So, this is the facial nerve, labyrinthine portion. And、uh, super visible enough. So, this is the Bill's bar. So, this patient needed、uh, two surgeries from、uh, lateral sigmoid and middle force approach. In this case, with the fashion of Shuanoma,、uh, with the fashion of Porsi,、uh, <coughs> very small tumor. So I used the middle force approach, right side. We can see the genital ganglion part and、uh, tympanic portion part. Removing the tumor, and we can see the stipis, and tumor was、uh, totally removed. And after mastoidectomy, I cut the、uh, distal end of the tumor and using a s u r a l nerve as an interpositional nerve graft, and I completed the facial nerve reconstruction. Next, surgery for CPM tumors using skull based approaches. Firstly,、uh, for b e s t i a l schwannoma surgery. So, I、uh, have some experience of trans labyrinth approach like this. But、uh, we u- routinely use the continuous facial nerve monitoring like this. So, this、uh, t r a n s l a b i r i n t h approach provides very small area. So, it's very difficult to do the、uh, continuous、uh, facial nerve monitoring. So, I, I don't like this approach. And I, I will also suggest t r a n s l a b i r i n t h approach is not suitable for the cases、uh, with absolute dominant side sigmoid sinus. And the case with a narrow press sigmoid space here, like this. So it's a usual one. But、uh, in this case,、uh, press sigmoid area is too narrow. In the contrary,、uh, lateral sigmoid approach is not suitable、uh, in the case with a broad、uh, destruction of internal auditory canal, like this. And severe high jugular bowel case. In this case,、uh, with a uh, broken 
until uh, internal auditor canal. I did the uh, translabyrinth in plus uh, middle force approach for uh, tumor total removal. In this case, also we can see the uh, destruction of the IAC. So I did the uh, translabyrinth in plus uh, middle force approach for total tumor removal. So next, CP angle and scorpion meningiomas. I approached from three directions, retrosigmoid, uh, transmastoid, and the combined transpetosal and anterior transpetosal approach. This is the distribution of types of CP and scorpion meningiomas in our series. Petrocribal, petrotentorial, tentorial, petrus, jugular, posterior petrus or sinodural angle, or uh, cribal or uh, from a magna. About the approach selection, for petrocribal or petrotentorial meningiomas, we use the combined transpetals approach mainly. For tentorial meningiomas, we have, uh, so selected anterior transpetals approach most frequently. And for the other types, uh, we uh, selected the retrosigmoid approach mainly. Totally, retrosigmoid, combined transpetosal, and anterior transpetals approach. When the seventh and the eighth cranial nerve uh, locate ventral, rostral, or caudal to the tumor without Meckel's cave extension, uh, we select a retrosigmoid approach like Bestrosuanuma surgery. When the seventh and the eighth lung dorsal to a small tumor located rostrally, to the IESC or Meckel's cave extension are the good candidates for anterior transpetals approach. These are the cases I selected the anterior transpetals approach. Small tumors. In this case, left side, I'm drawing the Kawasit's triangle. I ligated the uh, SPS like this and cutting the uh, tentorium and we can see the fourth nerve and the fifth nerve here. So cystana portion was uh, removed and after that I'm opening the IAC from rostrally I'm taking the intramatal part of the tumor, and tumor was totally removed. Uh, we can see the basal artery, uh, seventh and the eighth cranial nerves. In this case, with the petrocribal meningioma, small one. <coughs> In this case, I <coughs> did a simple anterior transpetals approach. Right side, I'm doing the anterior petrosectomy. <coughs> and I'm cutting the uh, middle fossa dura like this. And I'm cutting the posterior fossa dura. And I, after ligation of the SPS, I'm cutting the uh, tentorium. We can see fourth nerve here. After opening the uh, Meckel's cave, I'm searching for the uh, feeders from the uh, meningo hypophysial trunk, and I found it. So I electrocoagulated the feeders from the uh, 
main hypophysial trunk. And this is the fourth nerve, sixth nerve here. And uh, we got the response from the sixth nerve stimulation. So under the uh, continuous uh, abducens nerve monitoring, I am taking the tumor. And we can see the basilar uh, artery. And I'm putting down the uh, super uh, tentorial part like this. And we can see the tentorial edge and third nerve here. So fourth nerve. Fifth nerve and the sixth nerve. So prevention of CSF leak is very important, of course. post uh, there are no uh, abducens nerve policy. And uh, I left a uh, small tumor inside the Dorero's canal here. For petal cryovar and petal tentorial meningiomas, we uh, use the combined transpetal approach, leaving the semicircular canal. Uh, these are the cases I uh, selected the combined transpetal approach, uh, big tumors like this. Left side. Uh, in the petal tentorial meningioma case, after removing the muscle surface, I'm thinning the <coughs> covering bone known as the sigmoid sinus. So we can see the semicircular canals. I'm cutting the middle fossa dura. I'm cutting the tentorium. We can see seventh and the eighth cranial nerves here. After internal decompression, we can see fourth and uh, fifth nerves. I'm opening the internal auditory canal. Seventh and the eighth cranial nerves here. Basilar artery, sixth nerve, fourth nerve, third nerve, pituitary stalk. Uh, tumors nearly totally removed. So when we do the middle force approach, we should care about the uh, venous drainage pattern. Uh, this is the usual uh, cavernous sinus, uh, inferior petrol sinus pattern. In this case, uh, adding to this, uh, there is a sphenobasal vein and pterioplexus venous plexus pattern. It's okay. But simple uh, sphenobasal uh, pterioplexus venous plexus pattern is so-called the uh, dangerous pattern for middle cranial force approach. In this case, with the petrol cryovar meningioma, uh, we use the combined transpetal approach, but venous drainage is uh, so much into the pterygoid process, dangerous pattern. So uh, to uh, preserve venous drainage, we use the modified antratranspetal approach uh, reported from KO University Group. Uh, this is a standard anterior approach, extradural approach. But uh, this is a modification of the anterior approach, uh, combina combination of uh, subdural and epidural approach. I use the modified anterior approach plus a transmastoid approach. So this is the venous systems, uh, what I wanted to preserve. So. I cut the posterior half uh, dura 
And this is the extradural area. I'm doing a Kawase's approach. And this is the subdural area, and we can see the venous systems. And I cut the tentorium and fourth nerve here. And so uh, fifth nerve here and the third nerve here. So tumor was uh, nearly totally removed. Uh, and tumors. Uh, I operated 160 uh, cases and uh, jugulofram and schwannomas uh, accounts for just half of our series. And I talk about the most frequent uh, jugulofram and schwannomas. According to the type classification from Professor Fukushima's group for type A, intradural, uh, we use the retrosigmoid approach. And for type B, uh, dumbbell-shaped. And for type B, uh, type C, uh, triple dumbbell-shaped tumor, we use the transmastoid transjugular approach. And for type C, we add high cervical exposure. About the roots for jugulofloramin tumors, retrosigmoid approach has two additional options of retrosigmoid suprajugular approach and infrasigmoid approach. Transmastoid transjugular approach has two ways of uh, transmastoid suprajugular approach and transsigmoid approach. Using this illustration of uh, triple dumbbell shaped jugular and schwannoma, retrosigmoid approach and two additional options of retrosigmoid suprajugular approach and infrasigmoid approach and uh, transmastered suprajugular approach and transsigmoid approach. Uh, about the infrasigmoid approach, after uh, drilling of the jugular process, uh, cutting the condylar emissary vein and marginal sinus, and uh, ele uh, doing elevation of the sigmoid sinus allows us to enter into the jugular foramen from medially. In this case, with a dumbbell shaped uh, tumor, left side. After partial mastoidectomy, we can see the uh, condylar emissary vein and the jugular bulb and internal jugular vein. And after that, uh, via the retrosigmoid approach, I took the uh, cisternal portion. We can see 10th nerve here. Uh, after cutting the condylar emissary vein, and I'm doing elevation of the sigmoid sinus, and we can reach the uh, foraminal part of the tumor like this. Probably a hearing disturbance uh, improved to the normal condition. In this case, with a dumbbell-shaped tumor, uh, we use the transmastered superjugular approach, right side, mastoidectomy first, and I'm dissecting the uh, sigmoid sinus, like this. I'm drilling around the jugular bulb. And we can see the uh, tumor and the jugular bulb, bulb here. I'm cutting the press sigmoid dura, and we can see the uh, cisternal portion of the tumor. 
Also, we can see the 10th and 11th nerve here. So this must be the 9th nerve schwannoma. And I started the continuous vagus nerve monitoring. Internal decompression first. Like this. We can see eighth nerve here. And uh, seventh and eighth cranial nerves. And after that, uh, I approached uh, the uh, foraminal part of the tumor. This is the jugular valve. So the tumor was totally removed like this. So uh, lower cranial uh, function were okay. And post operative course was uh, uneventful. So transsigmoid approach was uh, used uh, by many big name uh, skull based surgeons like this. In this case, with a triple dumbbell shaped tumor uh, with a large extracranial part with uh, sigmoid sinus occlusion. So in this case, I use the uh, transsigmoid approach. Left side, after high cervical exposure, I am doing mastoidectomy. This is the extracranial part, large one. 11th nerve here and internal jugular vein here. And I cut the internal jugular vein and reflect it toward rostrally. And I'm ligating the uh, sigmoid sinus and cut it. This is a uh, trans-sigmoid approach. Tense nerve is here. And after that, I'm uh, approaching the extracranial part and uh, lower cranial function was com uh, completely compensated by the, the other side. So I took the tumor totally. And uh, this is the big tumor cavity. So uh, lastly, I'll uh, refer to the application of skull based approaches for vascular regions. Uh, for STA SCA bypass, the subtemporal approach is uh, generally used, but we usually select the transmastoid, transtentorial approach due to the minimal resurrection of the temporal lobe. In this case, with the vertebral basilar insufficiency, we did the left STA SCA bypass. This is the STA. After mastodectomy, we can see the semicircular canals and the fourth nerve here. I put in uh, STA and uh, SCA. So note the uh, minimal temporal lobe retraction like this. So deep uh, site anastomosis was completed like this. And the uh, post the angiography uh, showed the uh, blood supply from the bypass. In this case, with a uh, ruptured VA union aneurysm uh, with uh, bilateral hypoplastic PCOMs. Uh, endovascular team uh, rejected the, to treat uh, due to the complicated shape of the aneurysm. So I had to do operation. Uh, but uh, I thought um, trouble must happen in this case. So, uh, I did the transmaster transtemporal approach uh, using temporal, temporary lateral artery SCA bypass and clipping uh, using arm raising technique like this. If the aneurysm ruptures, I would occlude both VAs, but we can't uh, expect uh, blood supply from the anterior circulation due to the uh, hypoplastic PCOMs. 
So I made the radial artery SCA bypass, and using this backflow from the uh, bypass to maintain the brainstem circulation during uh, both VA occlusion. I'm checking uh, arm raising before surgery and uh, after mastodectomy and cutting the tentorium fourth nerve here both VAs uh, SCA so arm raising larger artery deep site anastomosis so we can see the uh, pulsation here after that I attacked the aneurysm but uh, unfortunately aneurysm uh, ruptured easily so I had to occlude both VAs uh, same as simulation so and using a back flow from the bypass uh, Maintaining the brain stem circulation, I clipped. Posterior the angiography uh, showed the uh, disappearance of the aneurysm successfully. So, in summary, uh, by using trans uh, tr sorry trans petrosal approaches, uh, difficult skull based surgeries were successfully performed and obtained satisfactory results in most cases. Neurosurgeons uh, who want to treat complicated skull based regions should master the transpetrosal approaches. Thank you for attention. Uh, thanks, Professor uh, Kohno, for the very nice presentation. Uh, it was fantastic, fantastic lecture, fantastic videos and cases.